just want to take you through a week in the program. Now, this is not the first week. This is not what you're going to see right away. We're going to ramp up to doing stuff like this. But I just wanted you to see what a normal week might look like and what a normal day might look like. That way, when you are starting the program, which is coming up soon, which is really exciting, it's not foreign and weird and it's like it's sort of as seamless as possible. That's the idea. You're going to see a lot of progression work. And by now, hopefully you've done at least one of the progressions. If not, I would recommend doing that just so you can, at the very least, see what we're working with and also get a taste of sort of how this program is going to go. Uh, jumping straight into it cold from nothing is totally possible and it will be fine. It'll be okay, I promise. But having a little taste of what to do because you can do this at home might be super beneficial. So there's some progression work in here that may or may not seem a little familiar. That said, we are going to start making our way into a gym. We cannot do this whole program at home because your options are just so limited at home. And especially because strength is the goal. We want to be strong so that the rest of life feels better. And we need to be able to lift weights. So this program is meant to be done in the gym. Off my soapbox. Uh, squat progression, single leg progression, glute bridge. Now this is something we haven't done yet if you're watching this before the program started. This is a way that we're going to start accumulating volume. And basically what that means is we're going to start getting more and more repetitions on your body so that we can start sort of doing this stuff more regularly. Glute bridges is a great example because we'll be doing those a lot. And also we can start building the muscles that we need and that pretty much everybody is weak with. So you may have heard me say this before that like glutes are the key to the world. Strong glutes mean strong squats and deadlifts, which means a strong person. So 110 reps in as few sets as possible. So that just means however you want to break it up, get to 110 as few, excuse me, in as few sort of with as few breaks as you can do. So for me, I look at this and say like 110 might be hard to do in one sitting. I might do 55 and then wish that I hadn't done 55 and then do like 40 and then 15 or whatever. But I would break it up into really, really big sets because for me, that's not mentally intimidating. But someone might look at that and say 110 is a lot. I have to break it up into 10 sets, or excuse me, 11 sets of 10. And that's okay too, because as time goes on, you'll see it's, it's not as intimidating. I'm actually stronger than I thought, and I can actually do sets of 20. I can do sets of 25 or maybe even 30. So this is a way for you to sort of progress at your own pace, because someone who can do 110 in a row is still going to get a lot of benefit from doing 110 in a row just as much as the person who has to do 11 sets of 10 one week and then 10 sets of 11 the next week and then five sets of 22 the week after that. So folks are just going to keep getting better and better and better and we can all get better at our own pace. It's a pretty cool thing about the program. But there's one day in particular we're going to look at just because it's, it's a little different than what we've seen before. Now when you see this, it's going to look a little bit different, but it should, just because it's in the app, but it should look pretty similar. So the first thing that every day is going to have is a warm up because warming up, I'm sure you've heard this before. You may have even heard me give this lecture before, but warming up does a couple of things. It helps keep you safe. And it also is a way for us to help start again, accumulating volume and being strong in the places where most people are weak. So the first thing we're going to do is jog in place for 30 seconds. If you have a treadmill, you're welcome to it. But I find that especially at like normal gyms, either all the treadmills are taken or, you know, there's, you can jump on it, but like 30 seconds doesn't really seem like a lot because you're just ramping up the whole time because you don't actually know how fast you should be going. Jogging in place is a perfectly fine option. We just really need it for about 30 seconds. And then you're going to do the, the rest of this stuff for two rounds. So you're going to go one, two, three, four, five exercises, and then back to the top and do it all again. One quick note, when you see as fast as possible, that doesn't mean sloppy. That means you're actively just trying to finish the movement as quickly as you can. So in this case, push-ups. So that means push yourself away from the ground as fast as you can. Again, don't be sloppy. Control is important. We're not looking for injuries before we've even started the workout, let alone ever throughout the program. Take that sort of on a daily basis. Don't worry too much about it. After that is the pull-up progression. So you'll have to go into the video. Again, this is where it looks different for me than it does for you. You have to go into the video to be able to see exactly what that is and what the instructions are. But just know that the first thing is 10 minutes of working on pull-up stuff. And I promise there will be things that you can do and there will be things that you can't do as you're doing that progression. So don't worry too much about it. Now, once you're done with that, we're going to do some more stuff on top of that because as you get better and better and better, the progressions alone may not be enough for you to get the workout that you're looking for. So after this, we're gonna do some pressing, doing using dumbbells on a bench and then 
a single dumbbell on the ground. So the way to read this is to see 3x10. In this case, that means three sets of 10 reps. So you're going to do the dumbbell bench press, which we'll get to how to know what that is in a second. You're going to do that 10 times, and then you're going to rest for 30 seconds. This number here is a tempo. We'll get to that in a second. You've done your 10 bench press. Superset means that you're going to go immediately to the next thing, and you're going to do 12 per side half kneeling single arm presses. But again, don't worry about how to tell what that is. You'll see in a second. But we've rested 30 seconds. We've done the next thing. We've rested 30 seconds. And now we're going to go back for the second of our three round or our three sets, excuse me, of the bench press. So you're going to do 10 more bench press, rest 30 seconds, and then another 12 per side half kneeling single arm press. And then you're going to rest 30 seconds. And then you're going to go back to the bench press for your last of your three sets. So it's three sets of 10 supersetted with three sets of 12 per side, meaning 10 of these, 12 per side of these, 10 of these, 12 per side of these, 10 of these, 12 per side of these, resting 30 seconds in between each one. If you find yourself week after week doing sort of just three sets of 10 of this, where you do like 10 and then rest 30 seconds and then 10 and then rest 30 seconds and then 10, oh no, I was supposed to superset. Well, I guess I'll just do this. Th that's okay. You will get some benefit out of that. Not nearly as much as doing them back to back. There is a reason why we're going back to back. And I won't nerd out too much on that right now. Keep an eye out for a podcast or a blog post. We'll talk about that later. Now this number is a tempo. It doesn't mean that you're gonna do 3,111 reps. That would be that would be pretty cool, but that's not what we're talking about. This is a tempo. What that means is we wanna control and go very slow on some part of this movement. And the first number is always sort of the, the opposite of what this movement is supposed to be. So we would call that the eccentric portion where you're usually lowering something. So if you think about a dumbbell bench press, you're lying on the bench and your arms are straight out and then you have to lower the dumbbells to your chest. That's your three seconds. That's where it's nice and slow. The next number is a pause. So you're resting at the bottom, not resting. You've lowered the dumbbells. You're going to hold them tight for one second. The next number is the upward movement, so it's going to be one second on the way up, aka as fast as you can, because it'll take about a second. And then the next number, the last number, is a hold at the top, so you're going to hold them at the top. So the whole thing looks like this. It's one, two, three seconds on the way down, one second hold on the bottom, one second on the way up, one second hold at the top. Now this isn't always going to be the first thing, right? So the, the slow on the way down, that lowering portion, it's not always the first part of the movement. Think like a deadlift. If the first thing you do is pull from the ground, you want to stand up fast, right? You don't want to try to stand up over the course of three seconds. That would take a long time, and it would be much harder than we want it to be, and it would put you sort of at risk of injury. We want you to stand up as fast as you can, and then hold for a second, and then that's where the three seconds kicks in. Again, it's, it's the opposite of what the, you think the movement should be, that's the number that is slow. That's the time that we go slow. So how do I even see this? How do I even visualize what a dumbbell pre bench press is in the first place? This little camera icon, I'm gonna pop that open. And there's a YouTube video. There's all sorts of videos. You're gonna see a few from Central Athlete. That's just the company that works with True Coach. You're gonna see a few of me. You're gonna see a few from all over the internet. But basically you have a quick video to show you exactly what this movement is. And the videos are all enough for you to get by and not hurt yourself as long as you listen to your body. But if you ever have questions about your technique, and again, this is a difference between your view and my view, you can send me a video. You can attach a video to this workout so that I can see exactly what you're talking about and you can shoot me a comment or a message and say, hey, I wasn't sure about this one. That's totally okay. So dumbbell bench press, half kneeling, single arm press again, if we don't know what that is, there's a video. I'm sorry, my little bubble here is in the way. But that's how you look up what it is. And that's how you know, sort of, what am I supposed to do today if you've never seen that exercise before. So in this case, we have a warm-up. We have a progression. We have a little sort of warning opportunity. We have movements that are going to help work on the things that we all need work on. And then we have a finisher. Again, we're just accumulating volume, working on muscles or movements or patterns that we all need so because we're all sort of weak in them. So in this case, dumbbell seated, overhead tricep extension, man, all these things have really long names. 
just like the glue bridge, 110 reps and as few sets as possible. In this case, you need weights, but we want the weights to be light. If you're using a weight that's too heavy and you can't possibly do more than three at a time, like you're going to be here a really long time. 30 sets is too much. We want white weights. We want big numbers. That's the idea. Excuse me. So this is a day and a week, right? This is sort of how this workout, excuse me, how each of these weeks will look and how each workout is going to look. Please let me know if you have questions. Once we hit day one and you get a feel for what this actually looks like, I think it's going to be super, super interesting. Please let me know if you have questions now or then, or if you've done any of these progressions and you have questions or thoughts or experiences about that. Again, this program is made better by your feedback. So the more we can talk about this, A, the more fun it's going to be, and B, the better I can make the program for you. So please leave comments. Please let me know what you think. We'll see you at the gym.